Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Master League and we are picking up exactly where we've left off. So we've got a game against Fulham coming up and we've got the January, no the January, we've got the transfer deadline day in the summer which will be absolutely massive. We've got some bids in for some big players that we're hoping to bring to Crystal Palace on this full manual Master League save as we enter the third season with Rude Hullet at the helm of Crystal Palace. So let's dive into it and uh, go straight in. We're going to go straight in to that game against Fulham where we need to get a win really we started the season with a 3-1 loss to Man City a goal from Eze wasn't enough for us as Ferro had a bit of a shocking time at uh, at the back but Eze not up for this one so it's going to be Brunetta in behind Oxlade Chamberlain or maybe we'll go Maitland Niles did okay out there actually we can put Maitland Niles out there you can see running a bit short on uh, on players in fact Frank Ribery is going to come in for a a, a game today, something we haven't said in a long, long time. Uh, Ferro, do I put my faith in Ferro? Yeah, I'm going to put my faith in Ferro as captain uh, as Eze sits this one out. Dodo is a bit more up for this than Mbabu, so he can come in. And we've got Palacios is also up for it. We've got, um, yeah, but I don't want to ruin the team spirit that much. Danzo is still up for it as well. He had a decent game, but we're going to stick with Tapsoba for this one. And uh, Shalov will come off the bench because he is also a super sub. I'm just wondering if we put Martinelli there and put Shalov up top. It's an 83. I think I'd rather use utilize Shalov's uh, super sub abilities that he's got. But there it looks like they're playing a 4-2-3-1. So um, a bit defensive maybe. But we're going to be going into Craven Cottage for this one. Let's get into it. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Craven Cottage for a Premier League match in London Town where it's Fulham against another London team in Crystal Palace as uh, Lafont had a good debut against Man City, unlucky to concede three. Ferro is trusted by the manager, Rude Hullet in this one, taking on the captain's armband after a bit of a dismal performance in the last game. But there is Fulham. And Crystal Palace is the team visiting Craven Cottage today. Dodo back in at right back. Sinchenko keeps his place at left back. Gwenduzi in there. Max Meyer leaves the club after actually playing in the game against Man City. But there are rumours abound that Crystal Palace have got a large number of shortlisted players that they're looking to bring in just before the end of the transfer window, of which deadline day is coming up very, very soon. So there is Fuller. Mitrovic leads the line. Aina, Dakota Reed, and Lookman in behind. Loftus-Cheek and Seri there. Marchand, Anderson, Ismaili, Tete and Ariola in goal. Crystal Palace lining up in the 4-3-3 that Rude Hullet's come to trust this season, it seems. Lafont, Dodo, taps over. Ferro, Zinchenko at the back. Guendouzi, Camavinga and Brunetta in midfield. Ribery and Goncalo Guedes support Martinelli up top. Trust given to the young new signing on a free transfer from Juventus again as uh, Ferro's there. There's Le Marchand at the back and Brunetta back into the starting 11 for this game today and it is Fulham that get us underway at Craven Cottage. So the Fulham faithful singing uh, come on Fulham in the crowd in the sunshine here at Craven Cottage. Good tackle that from Zinchenko to try and get uh, Crystal Palace on their first attack. A bit of a direct ball up towards Martinelli who turns out towards uh, youngster Ribery. Lovely bit of skill there. Just held up the ball but thought he might get a free kick with that nudge in the back. Uh, nothing forthcoming from the referee. Brunetta flicks that one on to Goncalo Guedes. This game starting at quite a pace. Gwen Goncalo Guedes just had the ball played behind him there from Martinelli. As it's cleared away and for four minutes in, a bit of a frantic start. And I know the Crystal Palace fans are going to be excited to see what Ribery can do in the famous red and blue of Crystal Palace. As uh, well, Dodo flicks the ball onto him there. Nice back heel into Dodo. He tries to flick it on one more, but a full and body got in the way. And Aina have a chance to pounce now. Lookman with the ball into De Cordova Reed. And we all know about Alexander Dimitrovic up front. A bit of a fiery character, but uh, a good goal scorer. In the lower divisions, always struggled when he stepped up to the Premier League, but was a very, well, very, very good striker in his youth days at uh, Anderlecht as that's ball play forward. Martinelli, Brunetta to Goncalo Guedes, into Martinelli again. Martinelli jinx one way, then the other. Gets round one, gets a left footed shot off, and the keeper palms it away. It's a good save from Ariola, and uh, Aina gets that one away, but it's only as far as Dodo, who has men on the edge but couldn't pick out either of them. And it was a poor pass from the Brazilian. Mitrovic looks the counter. Crystal Palace with a number of players back though. And 10 minutes in. 
a frantic start, but it is nil-nil. So the first time Fulham have really ventured into the Crystal Palace half, and it's Aina over the top. He is in behind Dodo, but lays it back to Marchand, and it goes out of play for a Crystal Palace throw. Rude Hullet will be pretty happy with how this game uh, has started here. You can see Fulham retreating back into a defensive shape, and that will give the likes of Zinchenko and Dodo as a fullbacks chance to move forward into a lot of uh, free roaming area. Goncalo Guedes, nice little step over, sees Zinchenko. Going in front of him. Zinchenko has a bit of time here. Can he pick a cross? No, took a bit too long. And Tete will uh, get that one away. Out to Aina on the other wing. Looks like Le Marchand and Aina are trying to form a bit of a partnership to double up on Dodo. He's not going to fall for it this time. Good challenge, that one. All the way across to Brunetta. And that was a terrible pass. Zinchenko with the ball. Infield to Brunetta. On one more to Camavinga. He takes a bit of a heavy touch but gets there for the other Fulham midfielder. Back to Camavinga from Dodo. Up to Brunetta. Tries to flick one through with a little Rabona, I think that was there. But Tete, well, Tete's been caught on it by Concarlo Guedes. Tries to fire that across goal but can't find Martinelli. And it is defended well. Mitrovic holds off Guendouzi. And it's chances like that that Rude Hullet is going to rue his Crystal Palace team missing. Concarlo Guedes can't get there either. And uh, Ishmaili takes control for Fulham at the back. And Crystal Palace need to be more clinical. It was an issue of theirs last season. As uh, they do have Shalov on the bench coming back to form of fitness. As great as get past his man, but the left-footed shot, nowhere near accurate. Cordova Reed is uh, tackled well by Dodo, who tries to get that one away up towards Martinelli. Maybe rush that a little bit. Lookman on the ball into Alexandra Mitrovic. Left-footed shot just past the post. Again, I think Lafont was beaten, but... The quarter roof tackled here. Dodo again. I need to stop doing that with clearances. I need to, if I'm going to do that, is put my foot through it and let the strikers run on. That is really close. Unlucky Mitro. Um, or actually pass, pass it to someone who is free and in space, not just do a lucky sort of pass up the line. That's where like pass assist brain comes into play because you just think, oh yeah, if I press pass in that general direction, it will find the striker, which doesn't happen anymore on manual passing. That's a nice crossfield pass though from uh, Dodo into Zinchenko. Guendouzi can pick this one up. Kamavinga just trying to drop the shoulder and give a bit of a bit of a shimmy there. Guendouzi will pick this one up. Goncalo Guedes out wide. Good first touch into. Zinchenko flicks that on one more. Martinelli. Zinchenko. Guedes. Oh, try to bend. I try to bend one in there. Just try to bend one in the far corner. Guendouzi uh, wins the header. Back to Goncalo Guedes. Encouraging Zinchenko to get in front of him. It's not the best pass to the Ukrainian. That is one of the worst one twos you'll ever see in history, and you can quote me on that. Gwen Goncalo Guedes into Martinelli. Holds it up well. Brunetta. Shot. It's past the post. It's a woeful finish. It's a wonderful move. Which started with the worst 1-2 in history. And then Goncalo Guedes into Martinelli. Great strength to hold off Anderson. Flicked in and Brunetta just gets his shot wrong. Best chance of the game by far. Camavinga with a really strong run from uh, centre midfield. Just lays it off to Brunetta. Guendouzi back to Brunetta. Tries to put that in towards Martinelli again. Try to lay it square. To Goncalo Guedes, but just couldn't get the right angle on the pass. It's cleared away. Guendouzi's there, and well, Martinelli, if he stayed on side here, he hasn't. I was going to say it would be a lovely attacking move, but just didn't get himself back in position in time. And the youngster's going to have to learn to work a little bit harder for this Crystal Palace team. Camavinga tries to feed a ball through to Frank Ribéry, who started well but has sort of drifted out of this game as it's gone on, and you sort of expect that as the youngster, Lookman. Turns back in towards Zinchenko, who tackles well. Zinchenko weighs a pass up the line. Goncalo Guedes ran away from the ball, and Martinelli had to come towards it. And it's given Fulham uh, another chance out on the left-hand side with Aina. Loftus-Cheek has Le Marchand on the overlap. Le Marchand comes in up against Camavinga. Great tackle from the young Frenchman as Ribéry comes forward. Tries to lay that in again. The pass into the final third is, is what's letting Crystal Palace down as... Aina gets the ball into Loftus-Cheek. Camavinga sees the run of Marchand and tries to cover it, but he's actually cut really well back inside here, and Lafont with a flying save. A really good save. Zinchenko's not going to keep that one in. With a minute to go in the first half, it's uh, Fulham ending it a little bit stronger. 
And Lookman will have a throw in. He's tried to put that in, but it's read very well by Guendouzi. On Carlo Guedes. Out to Brunetta. Brunetta tries to dink that one up towards Martinelli. Anderson reads it, and at half time at Graven Cottage, it's nil nil. A pretty even game. Uh, Brunetta probably with the best chance of the game. Four shots to two in favour of the away team, Crystal Palace. Rude Hullet will probably be happy. Needs that breakthrough. So substitution then for Crystal Palace. Shalov comes in up front. His first start of the season didn't feature uh, not even in the match day squad in the first game. Uh, Frank Ribery, uh, we mentioned in the first half, the game just seemed to be passing him by a little bit. Goncalo Guedes moves out to the right-hand side. And uh, Shalov goes up front with Martinelli going out to his more natural left position as Brunetta has uh, found a bit of space in here. Chip towards the back post. Shalov brings that down really well. He's coming to the game straight away. Shalov with a hit. It's blocked. Goncalo Guedes tries to go the clever little pass over the top. And Tete panics and puts it behind for a corner. And Shalov straight into the action. Rude Hullet happy with his substitution there. It was a good turn from Shalov. A good block shot. And then uh, this little dink run, looking for the run of Martinelli. Tete panicked and had to head it behind. And it does give Crystal Palace a good opportunity from this corner as Tapsoba moves around in the box, trying to just drift away from his markers. He's gone towards the front post, up against the Quota Reef. Tapsoba flicks it on, it's bouncing around. And uh, Zinchenko's there, tries to fire that cross in. It's blocked well by Bobby de Quota Reef. Bobby de Cordova Reed and goes out for a throw in. Crystal Palace uh, keeping this, this pressure on. Zinchenko looks to fire it in towards Goncalo. Great designer. Completes the clearance out to Camavinga. First time shot. What a hit from Eduardo Camavinga. And what a save from Ariola in goal. Just a bit more of a hit and hope. And maybe that's what Crystal Palace need a bit more of. It was headed away once, then second by Aina. And Camavinga, left footed strike. The dip on that is incredible. And Ariola, a flying save through the air. Really top draw save, that one. As uh, Zinchenko on another corner here. Taps over. Again, just drifting towards that front post, trying to get Decorda Reeve to mark him. And he does. And uh, Zinchenko fires this one in. And has actually got back of him. Taps over with a header too close to Ariola, though. Easy save in the end for the goalkeeper. Mitrovic on the ball on the edge of the area to Fulham. He's actually nutmegged. Taps over there and Loftus-Cheeks just drifted into the box. And what a save from Lafont. Not being called into action really at all in this game. He's had a couple of shots past his post but not really making a big save. And this one, great little nutmeg on Taps over. And Loftus-Cheek just Crystal Palace parted like the Red Sea. And Lafont pulled into a very good save. And uh, De Cordereve is replaced by Kearney. So a more natural Number 10 coming on for Fulham now. That definitely looked like a push in the back, but the referee says play on as Lafont tries to get Crystal Palace away on a counter-attack, and it's Shalov leading the charge, and he's been tackled very well by Le Marchand, to be honest. And Camavinga does well defensively there. Dodo up to Guedes. Lovely back heel to flick it into the path of Camavinga. Camavinga has got space to run into. Some intelligent running from his teammates. Camavinga over the bar. Lovely back heel from Goncalo Guedes to get this move going. And Camavinga, you can see the run of Shalov and of uh, Martinelli just opened up the space for Camavinga. A left-footed strike. Lent back too much over the bar. And he looks up to the skies in desperation. You can see Rude Hullet on the sideline asking his Crystal Palace team to push a bit further forward. And that has caused a press here. Shalov. Can't quite get the ball, but it's a poor bit of defending. Shalov's in, and it's a wonderful save again from Ariola, And he is keeping his team in this game today. Camavinga up to Goncalo Guedes, up to Shalov. Sort of missed it, but got in the way, and oh, it's straight down his throat. Good save, though. Taps over, trying to make a nuisance of himself again in the box. He's beaten in the air once again for that one, though, and Crystal Palace may need another tactic from these corners. As, uh, it's going to be a throw in Zinchenko into... Gwenduzi, who looked to play this one across to Camavinga. Can't quite get there. Beaten to it by Loftus Cheek. As uh, Kearney then picks it up into Mitrovic, who was hounded around that. Aina trying to get in behind Zinchenko. Seri comes forward with the ball. Well tracked back, though, by Brunetta, who wins that really well for his team. Camavinga invites Dodo to come forward with this one. Dodo. Space to run into. A few bit of a lack of options. Has Camavinga in the middle. Camavinga back hill. Releases Brunetta. And it's Ariola again with a fantastic save. Martinelli dinks this one in. Brunetta is underneath it, but it's headed away. And Aina's back there to complete the clearance yet again and control possession for Fulham. And how of Crystal Palace 
Not got a goal in this game so far. Just over an hour gone. And at the moment, Fulham are just trying to keep a bit of possession and get this back. But they've given it away dangerously. Guedes is in and Laf not Lafont is Ariola. What a save from the Fulham goalkeeper. He's having a superb game back there. So substitution for Crystal Palace. Maitland Niles on to replace Dodo. Uh, Fulham made a sub as well, but I missed uh, what the change was. Dodo not happy that he's coming off for that one there. Maitland Niles straight into the action takes an early throw. Camavinga fires it in back post. Martinelli, are you joking me? What a save and what a game Ariola is having for Fulham today. Martinelli sneaking in at the back post. A wonderful crossfield ball from Camavinga. And how has he kept that out? How has he done that? Fulham are all at sea at the moment and they've got their goalkeeper to thank. And that that's probably an understatement. Camavinga around the corner into Brunetta. Turns. Is he caught late? Referee says no. I don't think there's been a, a single free kick in this game since the first half. Kamavinga tries to play that one in. Lookman in behind Zinchenko. Out to Kamara who came on. Must have been for Mitrovic I guess. Ayana. Ola Ayana back there. Front of the ball. Loftus Treat tries to float it over back to Ayana. Is he going to keep that in? No he's not. Goes behind. 20 minutes to go. So another substitution. And third and final substitution for Crystal Palace. Palacios on. Gwenduzi comes off in central midfield. Fresh legs. Well, for, for the Eagles. Let's see if it can make a difference in the last 20 minutes of the game. Palacios just come on, gives it away with his first pass in the game. Not the best thing to do there. Lookman looks to go over the top, but taps over. will cover that one relatively easily. And oh, a bit of a mistake at the back there. And that's what Crystal Palace don't want to do. They've defended well today. They don't want to give away an easy goal. Brunetta, Martinelli up towards Shalov. Shalov holds it up and turns. Sorts of gets away from Anderson. Shalov's in. Shalov shoots in its top corner. And finally, Crystal Palace get the breakthrough. Shalov is there, and it's a wonderful finish from the sub striker who's come on. That was the plan from Hullet all along to get it into him. A lovely turn. He held off Anderson, and it's 1 0. And you can't argue that that's not been due, deserved, and been coming. It just uses Brunetta as a sort of a dummy. Just got a good bit of strength. Rocket it past Ariola. Nothing the keeper could do with that one. 1 0 Crystal Palace. And now I've just got to defend well. That's all I've got to do. Just defend well. Shalov, lovely turn to get away. Lovely bit of strength there just to hold off the final tackle. And an absolute bullet finish. 1-0. Right, we're going to go and make a slight defensive change here. We're just going to drop Kamavinga back. I know it's going to hurt in terms of their performance and what they can do. But I think two screening midfielders uh, in front of the back, the back four now is the right idea. We're going down to first step defensive. So our tactic will be to drop people back basically to the halfway line and then we're uh, going to press when they get into our half and hopefully that will keep us in a good a good shape Kenny robbed and then we try and hit on the counter attackers that is that is ridiculous but I can tackle him and not come away with the ball but uh, Martinelli's there anyway and we can try and keep this for a little bit at the back and I'm more than happy to do that because we need three points on the board we really do although just saying that. Fulham have left a lot of space for us to bring that forward. I don't know why I've asked Sinchenko to run there. He's absolutely shattered. Sensible. Look at this. Oh no. Just as I say, look at this. Keeping it well. Kept it well there. Brunetta can turn. Tries to find Martinelli. And that's the first pass in about 20, I would say, that we've given the ball away. And that is a little bit annoying. Come on. Now we do need the team really to work hard for each other we need people to track runners we need people to press the ball and, and keep well I was going to say press the ball and keep the shape that's going to be a foul didn't want to do that with Maitland Niles still says we've got subs I, they must have implemented sort of Covid rules because I've definitely used that's this will be my fourth sub because it's been Shalov at half time Maitland Niles and uh, Palacios at centre back and now I've just done oh no it's gone all the way through tap sober I just already pressed clearance it's gone away it's been boomed out seven minutes to go I don't, don't concede from a set piece please don't concede from set piece Seri floats in Ferro's underneath it he's beaten in the air Kearney's there it's off the line again oh my word we had one of them against Man City as well but I didn't mean as much as this because we are winning this game Kearney it's blocked get there Lafont. keep it in he does which means we can eat up a little bit of time now with the goalkeeper. We'll do 
a throw out towards Palacios, who's uh, he is going to get there. That isn't what I wanted to do. I actually wanted to do the little dummy throw that you can do, but it didn't quite work. And Babu, fresh legs. You can run at them, son. You can run at them. You've got the legs to do it. No one's coming to press you down either. No one's coming to press you. Fires that one in. Shalov with a header and... Ariola turns it around the post again. It's definitely COVID rules with five subs. I don't know why. We might stick to say we're only allowed three. I feel like that's a little bit cheating. From now on, we'll do three subs only a game. But uh, Mbappe fix it in. It's, a, oh, it's another good save. Shalov's had a great game coming off the bench. It is going to be Mbappe to take this one. Do you know what, actually? We're just going to sort of fire this one in and see if that works. And Babu puts it in towards the tap. Anyway, it's gone in. Ferro! It's gone in! What a recuperation from Ferro. Made the captain after a terrible performance against Man City. But he's now got a goal to make it 2-0 Crystal Palace. And for once, a defensive confusion goes in our favour. That is brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. It was fired in. Tapsoba just got himself in the way. Ferro, what a touch. What a finish. The centre-back will be delighted. And Babu fires this one across. I, I'm not sure if everybody missed it at the front post, but he's put it in the gap between Seri and the post. Ariola could do nothing. It's 2-0 Crystal Palace. There's not long to go. And uh, what is it? There's like three minutes to go. And surely Crystal Palace are getting three points. And you've got to remember, down the other end from a corner, it was kept off the line again by, I think, Zinchenko before he got subbed off. But he may have already been off the pitch by then. But Crystal Palace are going to be getting their first three points of the season, surely, as Lafont can just hold on to this one here. And he's actually going to go long and high with this one up towards Shalov, who uh, actually does well. And... It's nearly there. Four minutes of injury time and one minute of it has already gone as Ferro reads that. He's going to be on a high now because uh, that goal has got him off the mark in the season and has made up for all the mistakes that he made against Man City. It's just cleared away down the line. About a minute and 15 seconds to go. And this has been a superb second half performance from Crystal Palace. Absolutely dominated the game. Nice, slow possession build-up as well. Really taking our time, waiting for chances to open as Patrick Bamford can't outrun Maitland-Niles. And this should be full-time, and it is full-time. 2-0, come on. What a finish from Shalov on the turn and shot, getting around his man Anderson. And Ferro with a lovely, neat little finish at the near post from a corner. And it's 2-0, and my God, that has knackered me out. 15 shots. 15 shots with 11 of them on target. Six shots and four on target for Fulham. That is laying down a marker of how we need to play for the rest of the season. Ribery with a very disappointing 4.5. Shalov gets man of the match in this one. And uh, yeah, wonderful performances all round, I would say. Oh, so absolutely delighted with that one. Superb performance from our boys there as uh, Crystal Palace. So well, we'll go into the results. It's Crystal Palace 2, Fulham 0. Man City beat Bournemouth 4-1. Forest lost at home 3-1 to Everton, who have started the season really well. Leicester 2, Leeds 2, Southampton 2, Sheffield United 0. Aston Villa 2, West Ham 0. Wolves 1, Chelsea 1. Spurs beat Newcastle 1-0. Arsenal losing again, this time 3-0 to Brighton. And uh, Man United 2, Liverpool 2. So a very good, entertaining game. Old Trafford, that puts us up to 10th. Above the likes of Man United and Arsenal, who sit bottom of the table. Zero points, two losses, seven goals against, no goals for. It feels like they may have been decimated in the transfer window. But this is deadline day. We've got some bids in for players. We are working hard. Lee Kang in. Not exactly what I wanted. E well, we've managed to reach an agreement. They're asking for better terms. Cyprian... His club wants to transfer with 11, 2 million more of what we offered. Gabriel Barbosa wants 13. Interesting. Going to become a maestro, that's really good. That gives him, I think, a boost as a captain now. I'll have to go and look into that. But we've got three potential signings that could be happening here. And if we can afford them all. So what's that? 11. That's 11 million. That's 24. But add on the. That's about 25. And that's, we should be able to afford these all, but the salary is going to be the killer. 41, so call that 42, call that 56. That's what, 98. 
which would leave us or oh, just enough I think just enough to get those done I sort of don't want to ruin any of them I think Barbosa's the more important one so we're gonna get Barbosa done first in the first two hours of the window and then we're gonna go and get an 83 rated box-to-box -box central midfielder Injury resistance one. That does worry me a little bit. I sort of feel like Lee Kang In is the more sensible one to go for, but that wage is absolutely huge. Star player, number 10. He'll be in and out with Eze, which frees us to play Brunetta up front. He's 21. He sort of fits everything we want to buy. I think surely he has to come in next. We're just gonna pay we're gonna pay the wage he wants, which leaves us with forty-one thousand in wages. Is that enough? So you can go and get Cyprian, who was nowhere near my list. Do you know what? It's not. I thought it was going to be spot on, but it's not. <sighs> That's annoying, because he's happy with that wage. And it's a wage cut. Oh, it's... <laughs> That's so irritating. Because I think he's now going to pull out of it. Because we're lowering his wage from what he wanted before. We're going to give him a little bit more bonus. I mean, a goal bonus. 13 grand if you score. Yeah, so further rounds of negotiation will be re viewed negatively by the by him. I think he's going to turn that down now. Yeah, that, that doesn't surprise me they've broken down. But I think I'm happy with the Barbosa and Lee Kang in, I think, were the more crucial ones to bring in. I do think that. I do believe that. Um, these guys, I mean, we could try and get Gundawan. I mean, I don't think we really need... A central midfielder. Attacking midfielder is what we need. And we've bought Lee Kang in with that. We've got Barbosa that can play all across the front three. I'd, I wouldn't mind trying to maybe exchange Petkovic for someone. I think that could be an option of something to do. Let's go and see. We're going to see how much uh, Petkovic is worth. Uh, where is he? He's worth 9.9. .9, so I think we could probably get a decent... A decent... Let's go and see if there's anyone... Or... Or... Oh, we could use this time to try and get Veer. Because we can definitely afford his release fee at 8 million. So, we've signed Lee Kang in. So, he can come off the list now. Or we go back in for Rafinha. Because we do need a right winger. But Veer is so versatile. And at 8 million... Sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Do we offer them Petkovic? Or do we just say sod it? We'll just pay your release. Yeah, we're just going to pay his release fee. We've got... Oh, we can't afford his salary. God damn it. <laughs> that is really annoying. Stengs could do a job. Do we go back in for Rafinha? At 21 million. We're probably not going to be able to afford his salary. We're only just off his salary. So if we want 37 and give you... A bigger appearance fee, a huge goal bonus, and a win bonus as well. Three hours to go. Luis Alberto's moved for £51 million to Chelsea. Rafinha's declined our offer. Shalov from Villarreal, we're definitely going to say no to that. He's just had a storming game for us, so that's okay. So Rafinha says no, he said no. We are running out of time. Shalov is definitely going to stay, so we're definitely going to end that. And do we go and just ignore the scout list, ignore who I've put on the listed players? Let's just go and have a look for market value. And we want them to be... That's easy, because we want them to be 9-9... Nine, nine, we want them to be about 9 million, so that we can do a straight swap for Petkovic. Oh, pants. 9-9-0-0-0. Nine, nine, zero, zero, zero. Yeah, 9 million. And let's just see who's around. Handanovic in goal. It's search is searched by overall rating, so we want biggest value for money. Oh yes, a good fun fun move. Um, Arsenal signed Edin Dzeko, so a 30, 36 year old Edin Dzeko. Uh, okay, let's search by market value. So the nine million. So a uh, Minamino. Oh, Minamino could be an interesting one. Very very versatile. Probably somewhat realistic as well in three years time if he's not settled in. Really crap at heading. That's an interesting one. Ronnie Lopez. Good balance. I don't mind losing a, out on a little bit of money. I mean, there's not huge 
value for money down at this sort of value. We're sort of looking for a Basuma. I quite like Basuma in real life. 77 rated. Again, we need a right winger more than a central midfielder. I guess let's, that would make sense, wouldn't it? To put that on position. Uh, right wing forward. And we, we'll up this to just give us a little bit more leeway. Nine and a half mil. We've got Nunes, Cabral. Not bad. He's, Cabral looks... Ball control 78, dribbling 80. Offensive awareness is rubbish. Speed's good, acceleration's good. Balance is terrible, so we'll get pushed off the ball easily. Hulk, oh, I would like to bring in Hulk. 36, he's so old. But he's got really good attributes. And he's versatile. I know he's 36, but as a sort of come off the bench sort of player... Oh, do you know what? For a, he's only worth five million. I'm, I'm gonna, because uh, they will accept a straight swap for Petkovic, so they're getting a better deal from that. Thirty nine, a two year contract. You don't want a release fee. We'll give you an appearance bonus because you're gonna be a sort of sub. Goal bonus, win bonus. I wonder if they'll do that actually for Petkovic. An hour to go. We haven't had any offers for our players in this. Hulk, uh, yeah, he's accepted, obviously. We're going to bring in Hulk. The Hulk is joining Crystal Palace. When I said I've turned down so many people by saying they're too old. Yeah. Petkovic is gone. Petkovic is gone. Hulk is in. And there we go. Transfer window done. The Hulk signs for Crystal Palace on deadline. Is that a panic? Is that a panic transfer? I mean, it could be, couldn't it? It could be classed as a panic transfer. Definitely could be. So, uh, yeah, Barcelona sold uh, Coutinho to PSG is the biggest deal. But there we go. That is the end of this episode. A bit of a monster. A great 2-0 win. And then uh, let me know down below what you think of those transfers. That was absolutely bonkers. But uh, the Hulk joins. That's the headline. Crystal Palace signed the Hulk. Or Crystal Palace signed Hulk. Or Hulk joins. I don't know what to call this episode without giving that away, really. Because that is a bit of a plot twist at the end. But there, yeah, maybe that. No, maybe that. Transfer window. Deadline day with a plot twist. Plot twist on deadline day. I'll come up with something catchy, I'm sure. Something clickbaity. That's what you want. But thank you so much for watching. We'll be back for another episode where we'll be playing against... Let me look in the background and say we'll come back for... Right, we'll come back for... Southampton and Aston Villa, so not too far away. Um, or, in fact, actually, no, we'll come back for Aston Villa and Stoke City in the FA Cup. So we do a league and a cup game, and then we go into this brutal run of Spurs, then Arsenal, then Man United, then Liverpool. So it's going to be a pretty fun time. But thank you so much for watching. For now, I am out, and your support is absolutely... I'm, I'm, I can't express the happiness that I get from you guys enjoying these videos and the comments you leave and reading them back. So thank you so much for watching. For now, I'm out. Cheers.